views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Coming up on this edition of Perspectives, the Senate health care bill stalls. Some Democrats are calling for Nancy Pelosi to resign and the Supreme Court reinstates key parts of President Trump's travel ban. That and a whole lot more. Our Democratic strategists and political analysts join us to weigh in on these topics and much more coming up on this edition of Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyman. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective which shines a light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. What's your perspective? Hey, hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. Of course, we thank you for watching us. We uh, invite you to watch us every week here on Perspectives on BronxNet's channel 67. If you don't have it, of course, Verizon Files is channel 33 and anytime on the web at BronxNet.org. It is here on Perspectives where we bring you the news, information, and the things that are making headlines. And, uh, of course, you can check in with us on TV, but also social media as well, Twitter and uh, Facebook. You can get us at BronxNet Perspectives or my professional page, Darren C. Jaime. And there you can find out about the latest that is happening uh, in the world and we'll even get my perspective and then get a chance to hear from you. What do you want to talk about? But as for what everybody's talking about today, it's pretty much health care and the Senate and the GOP trying to get a health care bill passed, but failing, not having enough votes. And uh, at least nine Republican holdouts right now are holding out, preventing the Senate from passing what would be called now Trump Care, uh, which is the repeal of Obamacare. And the GOP, of course, has passed this bill in the Congress. The question is, can it make it through the Senate? Our guests in studio are here to discuss that and a little bit more. We've got a uh, Democratic strategist, Roy Paul, who's here with us. And also, we've got the owner of Retrovision Media and our political analyst here on Bronx Net, Lee Bynes, who also shares with us. And uh, a little bit later on, we'll also have another guest who will join us in studio, and we'll introduce them when they arrive and uh, put them on set. But listen, uh, first of all, gentlemen, thank you for coming and sharing. My pleasure. Uh, as we talk about this, first of all, Roy, I'm going to go first up with you. The GOP lacking at least nine people uh, to be able to pass this. The question is, do you think that we'll see a passage of this bill uh with all Republic, with, with the majority of Republicans? I think it's 50-50. If it does pass, it will be simply with the Republicans. But I think that nine number of those who are currently opposed is going to shift. When they re come back from recess after July 4th, it will not still be nine. They will take up a couple of senators who will pledge support for the bill. And that's why they are recessing it, because right now they don't have enough votes. But I think the sticking point for a lot of the GOP members who are against it is that it, the current bill largely mirrors that of Obamacare. There are some key points that are different, but I think the sticking point that everyone is talking about is the fact that some 20-plus million people will lose health care over a period of time if they pass the current version. So they're going to work their way back to try to get some of those GOP senators who have some issues with some of the key sticking points and get their support. Kind of interesting because Mitch McConnell is one of those people who is pushing the bill forward. But if we look at the numbers, his state is probably one of the ones that would be most adversely affected. Well, you know what? Not only that, but I think you should look at the nine uh, senators who are on the Republican side that have issues with this. It's not exactly that they have issues with it on the same side. They have issues opposite each other. In, in fact, uh, uh, Paul uh, is... Uh, uh, thinks that the, the and and Lee and uh, the senator from Texas, uh, Cruz, uh, they are thinking that uh, the the bill didn't go far enough. In other words, they want the the entire guts of Obamacare ripped out completely. The other side within the same Republican Party are thinking, wait a minute, these are moderates. We 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 have to face our constituents. We don't want to go back uh, to the town hall meetings to be screamed at, cursed at, spit on, etc. Uh, so that's where the problem, 
the problem lies is. Now, whether or not, uh, I, I know that uh, Mitch McConnell is supposedly this master deal maker, et cetera, but uh, I simply don't see how he's able to bring those two entities together where they could actually come up with a compromise and do something. And, and, and can I just tell you, one of the biggest misnomers about politicians is that they care about people. I, I mean, let me just tell you that that's the God honest <laughs> truth. Mitch McConnell doesn't care that the people in his state are going to be the most adversely affected if Trump care passes. He cares about whether or not he can get reelected. And to the extent that he can do what he can to get the votes, to get a passage as the leader, and sell it as best as he can sell it within his party back in Kentucky to get the support he needs to get reelected, that's all they really care about. They don't really care about the 20 plus million people who aren't going to have health care. In fact, uh, Ke Kellyanne Conway was on record saying those people who won't get health care can get jobs that have health care sponsored by their employer. Why not just get jobs? Why not just come from rich families? They don't really care about the people. I, w I would I would have to concur with that to a certain uh, certain extent simply because of the fact that if any politician whatsoever and I, right now we can only deal with the the Republicans because they're in control they're running the show they're putting up the bills and they have the votes or not to put them through but if you take a look at not only the the health care bill that came out of the house if you take a look at the bill that came out of the Senate if you take a look at the budget that came from both of these I would have to agree 100 percent these people do not care about uh, the, the, the public. And if, in fact, if you drill down on this story and start taking a look at the 22 million people or there so who uh, could lose their insurance, these are the least powerful people. These are the most vulnerable. They, they are not respected because A, if you're poor, you don't have money, you can't contribute. And in fact, a lot of these people may be in the category or the demographic, or the demographic of people who don't even vote. So from that perspective, it's almost as though that, uh, that they're letting these people go. Mm -hmm. These are the people that we're just going to have to write off, and uh, because well, it's literally they're dying. Literally, they're die. literally, they're going to let these people uh, because they, they they don't have a powerful enough voice uh, in Washington or in their local communities to fight this on their own. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's either going to be done by the politicians, it's either be done by the Democrats, which they don't have the numbers in the House, the Senate, and they don't have the White House. So I, I think right now it's a it's a volatile situation. Well, let me speak to the Democrats for a minute, Roy, and cut in here, because as you talk about the Democrats, one of the things it seems to do, they're standing back and watching this, you know, epic boom, if you will. Is this the best possible strategy for Democrats, given the fact that uh, you've got this midterm election that's coming around the corner, is it that you stand there and watch them explode, or is there going to have to be some affirmative action taken? Well, the latter. It's, it's affirmative action, but it's, it's in the kind of action that they are only limited in their ability to do, which is to yell and scream and say to the people, call your senators, rile up their base to go after what the Republicans are doing, but that's really all they can do. They don't have any legislative authority to either overturn what the GOP is going to do or sue them. They can't do that. So the only thing they can do is to tell the people, rise up, yell at your senators, and hopefully that groundswell of support will not just get the senators to change their position or keep those nine people where they are, but also when it comes to the midterm elections and the Senate elections to try to get those people out to get the Democrats elected. I think they have to go a little bit further than uh, simply uh, uh, screaming and hollering and writing their senator or their local or their congressman. I think the Democrats' uh, best strategy right now is to take this opportunity to put forth their idea how to fix Obamacare. They have to be able to tell the public, look, this is how we're going to incentivize the insurance companies not to leave those markets. They have to be on the, on the, the, the mic every day saying, uh, 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 putting their positions forward and telling, uh, telling, explaining to the people why Obamacare is failing at such a fast rate. It's the fact that... Uh, but they're not going to do that. Well, what that's, Democrat that's, is going to rise up and say the health care policy of the land is failing the people? I mean, that's an immediate way to get yourself out of office. Well, no one's going to do that. Well, you can't deny it. You cannot deny it. These things are happening uh, when these major carriers decide that they're going to pull out of a particular exchange. Uh, it's all over the news. Uh, we have to have it. Well, the Democrats have to have an answer for that. And if it's uh, maintaining the fact that it's impossible for any health care uh, of any kind to be able to survive without government intervention at some point and maintaining those subsidies so people who are on a modest income can still afford to buy something, uh, then, then I, I don't see them making much of a difference. Walk me up to 2018 for a minute. I mean, obviously, we've got midterm elections that are coming around the corner. How well is this going to really play into uh, midterm elections? We saw a very hotly contested race in Georgia, uh, and that one 
really got the attention. A lot of money thrown in that race from both sides of the aisle. Uh, but can we see some real damaging effects in the midterm election based on what we're seeing right now? No, the Republicans are going to keep the House. I, I mean, people are going to yell and scream about what's going on now, but it's not going to change the political prospects of what the Democrats can't do. And that's because of the leadership of the Democratic Party. We don't see things a as a very inclusive way. Uh, we see Democrats and Republicans as different. We see the numbers being historic based on polling and, and, and how districts have traditionally been gerrymandered. So what we have here is we have a big ideological problem within the Democratic Party and the leadership is what has to change if there's going to be any change in the polls. I would, I would definitely agree that there is a significant divide in the Democratic Party and if there's not unity, you have a problem. Uh, you have what I like to think is your country club uh, Democrats who are more linked with corporate America and then you have your progressives on the, on the other side who are more linked with the people. Uh, the, the fact that Nancy Pelosi is uh, actually standing her ground and saying that, look, I'm not leaving under any circumstances. I looked at Nancy Pelosi's position. I looked at her reputation. I found that she's pretty much, uh, uh, her claim to fame is the amount, the, the fact that she can raise a lot of money. That's why Nancy Pelosi is still where she is, because she can raise money. My problem with that is where does the money come from? Okay, if you have uh, are hanging out with people who can write a twenty-five thousand dollar check, then that one person is your constituency. If you have a thousand people who can only write a twenty-five thousand dollar check, you're talking to the people. All right, and so I think that's the fundamental difference between the two part between the two entities within the Democratic Party until and until they are able to find a way to merge those. Uh, those two groups together, the Republicans have a chance to keep the House. I want to come back and talk a little bit more about the Democratic Party. How do you actually fix that? Because guess what? You know, you do have a, a midterm election, but you also have presidential elections coming around the corner. Uh, and many people say the Democrats bought up a failed, a, a flawed candidate uh, in Hillary Clinton. How do you fix that? What do you do to go forward, especially given the fact of the tenor of the times? We'll have that conversation and a little bit more right here on Perspective. Stay with us. We'll come right back right after this. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Mike, make a difference at some point. Baron Jaime here with you. We are continuing our conversation, talking here on Perspectives. Our guests, Roy Paul and Lee Bynes here with us in the studio. Before we went to break, we talked a little bit about the Democratic Party and what they need in order to survive the midterm election. Let me just go back to Nancy Pelosi for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, does she have the ability to lead the Democratic Party to the future? No. Lead? Oh. Okay. No. No. But here's the, here's the problem with Lee talking about money. This is the catch-22. Mm -hmm. We all know money corrupts, and in money in politics is the root of all evil. That saying is true for a reason. But here's the problem. If you're a Democrat, 
and you're on the field, you're in a competitive election, you're trying to beat the Republican, and someone from the Democratic Party says, we can help you, we can put in $100,000 in your campaign, it'll help shift the tide, you take it because you're stuck in the middle of an election and you want to win, you need resources to win. How many times do people stop and go, wait a second, sir, from the Democratic Party, where'd you get that $100,000? Can I vet those d donors to make sure they didn't come from Goldman Sachs? Mm -hmm. No, you take the money and you run and you continue with your campaign. So while money is terrible in politics in terms of its influence and how people get bought, Democrats, candidates on the line, they take the money. And you know what? He's absolutely, I have to concur with that, but, but with that money comes strings, all right? And uh, as soon as you take more than, you know, $25, $50 from a person, you are pretty much obligated to perform, all right? And because of that, uh, the special interests are able to determine which bills will even make it to the floor, okay? And uh, so, so if, you, if the Democratic Party wants to survive moving forward, uh, they're going to have to rethink how they deal with financing their campaigns. Now, he said no to Nancy Pelosi. You say? I say no to, to Nancy Pelosi as well, simply because of the, the fact that I have an old saying. I discussed it with Roy prior to coming on uh, camera. There's no future in yesterday. I was speaking with one of Roy's uh, 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 colleagues over in the, the green room section, uh, indicating that uh, you know he was sick 26 years old. We're looking at putting forth people who are going to be living through the effects of people my generation are laying down for them right now. You see, millennials at this point, when they look at how the country is being, they've never had any, any idea of uh, what capitalism, the good part of what capitalism did. They only see what's happening, what's happened in their life. They've, they've seen nothing but wars. They've seen nothing but a down uh, tick in the ability to earn a living, to graduate from college without debt, uh, to, to, to be able to establish themselves in life without being at a deficit. In other nations around the, uh, around the world, when their students come out of college, they're debt free. They don't have to worry about uh, coming up with money to pay for health care. So, Americans, the, the, the people who are growing up in right now are at a, at a deficit. And if we still uh, keep people like Nancy Pelosi, who refuses to leave because of the fact, again, I had mentioned she is a, 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 a huge fundraiser, uh, she's only making it more difficult down the line for tomorrow's uh, Americans who have to uh, figure out a way for themselves. Well, let's talk about tomorrow for a minute because obviously a lot of focus about the 2018 election and the next presidential election. And the question about how well is Russia going to play in the next upcoming election? We're still talking about it today. A lot of conversations being had right now about Russia and meddling and some controversy Roy, about whether or not the Obama administration actually handled Russia the right way and uh, compared to what we're seeing with, uh, with coming out of the uh, White House right now. Your thoughts as to how the Obama administration handled uh, Russia? Yeah, um, to the first point, average voters ain't thinking about Russia. They're not going to sleep thinking about Russia. They're going to sleep about how they can feed their families, how they can send their kids to college. So this will have no impact on any election, mm -hmm. none. It will have impact nationally when what people are talking about from a foreign policy perspective. It will have impact if there is some smoking gun about collusion with the Russian government. But outside of that, it will have zero impact on any election. You will not see any candidate in any part of the United States of America trying to win a congressional election about Russia. It's not going to happen. But let me say this. I don't know why people are surprised when we say things like President Obama wasn't perfect on foreign policy. People like to think that politicians are perfect, and I understand the fascination with President Obama because he was the first African-American president, but he wasn't a perfect president. Donald Trump will be far from a, per a perfect president. And so are there things that I'm sure President Obama would sit down and say would have loved to handle things differently? Absolutely. And we see that now with Trump in not even a year in office. He's making a whole bunch of mistakes. So give credit where credit is due, but let's not paint everyone as being a perfect president. You know what, I, I wouldn't... Uh want to paint uh, Barack Obama uh, as a perfect president. I had serious uh, issues with the way he handled Syria, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to this Russia situation, uh, as far as how he 
could have handled that better. It's difficult to say. We were with all of these things that were going on. Was in the the heat of an election. Uh, Donald Trump was out there screaming on a daily basis that everything was was uh, fake. Uh, that it was fixed. Uh, you couldn't trust anybody, including the media. If the president had released the fact that the Russians uh, were actively, extremely actively engaged in disrupting uh, uh, the America's democracy, uh, he would only add it fuel to the fire. Uh, secondly, I have to concur with you. Yeah, uh, no election is going to be. I, 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 um, I, but from a different perspective, uh, I do agree that no election, House or Senate, will be won or lost on on what's going on with with Russia. And with that particular uh, statement, I would say that uh, no money is not necessarily the the. Uh, uh, the root of all evil, I would say ignorance is, because if more Americans were had some idea of how the Russians did affect uh, the elections. Now, I know all of the security folks, Brennan, uh, Clapper, all came out and said that not one vote was switched at the ballot box through, through uh, uh, interference. But that's not where they switch, which, where they switch uh, people's uh, votes. They switched them in their mind. When Russia was able to uh, uh, through WikiLeaks, through um, uh, uh, dirty tricks in terms of exposing the John, Podesta's, John Podesta's uh, emails to be able to show that, yes, Debbie Wasserman uh, Schultz was involved in trying to hold Bernie Sanders at bay. But Lee, this well, hold, is politics. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh -huh. take a break, yeah. and I'm going to let you come back, and I'm going to let Roy pick up where he left off. Be right back. I'll take a break. Come right back right after this. Okay. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Continue our conversation with Roy Paul and Lee Bynes and uh, talk a little bit about politics. Yes, well, were you saying something before? Well, I think Lee's points are valid, and, and I think they we need those uh, uh, inputs in the conversation. But this is politics. This is how it works. It's a blood sport. And what he's saying is we need a revolution, and we hear people say that all the time. We need a radical revolution and a change in our system. It's not... Uh, something that we don't need. It's not something that I think is realistic for today in our two-party system. But it's great for third-party candidates and it rouses the supporters up for Bernie Sanders and other people within the party and Green Party members who want to talk about the others. And that's great. We need that as a part of the conversation. But what we have is a two-party system with the Democrats and the Republicans. Money is going to always be a very important part of our system because the people within the system are not going to vote to change it. They like going to the big party donors and saying, give us money money to black out people who don't uh, agree with their viewpoint so they can push people out of the system and that's just how it's going to always work and I think the more we come to the understanding that we live in a very flawed system and we have to do the best we can with very corrupt people sometimes that's how we're going to move the needle forward. I, I'm unwilling to accept that well, you should. point of view. I am absolutely unwilling and when I look at uh, the way the world is working right now the world is moving left. There is no doubt about it. But that it. has nothing to do with our current it, system. If you, you know want to play a game, uh -huh. you have to get into the minds of the people playing the game and play the system. No, you if have you're to playing get into Monopoly, the minds of the people no, who are if you're the playing game Monopoly, if minds. you're playing Monopoly, there are rules. You play by the rules of Monopoly. 
if you want to change the game, you have to create a whole new system. But that's what Good we're luck here to with do. that. It's not going to happen. What but to that's do. what the system is. The system is these are the four corners of our game. Mm -hmm. How do we play with the rules of the game? You want to be in politics? You want to run as a Democrat or a Republican? What are the rules of winning as a Democrat and as a Republican and play within the rules and you win? I have more faith in the, uh, in the, the generation of tomorrow and how, for how them how to stay within worked? this box because of the, the, the. It doesn't work, Lee. The, but because the generation of, of, of tomorrow. Tomorrow is thinking outside of that box. But they're These not winning. Rules. Those who think that don't win. Uh, you you know what? We're at you, the beginning. They, they get in and then they get corrupted. We're at the they say that to get in and then they get corrupted. Every, it happens we're to everybody. We're at the beginning right? of a transition. Nothing as corrupt as you are explaining to right now in the system that currently exists that intensifies the fact that or forces what 340 what million. What you know transition? what? I mean, no, we're not going to be able to talk. John Ossoff, if he had won and he then gotten won. corrupted, yeah. would have no, been a transition. He hasn't won. Uh, if in this two-party system that you've already described as being corrupt, it influenced is. by money, uh, if if I, I cannot possibly see the generation of tomorrow accepting that whatsoever, and radical times which we are in right now call for radical solutions. But in and order we to are have at the, the solutions, they have we're to at win. the precipice. Oh, oh, oh. We are literally at the precipice right now of people reaching their tolerance level of pain and deciding to say that this isn't working for me, it didn't work for my father, it didn't work for my grandfather. I'm going back 30 years. I've, I've seen how the unions have were busted uh, uh, in, in the 1980s and consistently. So uh, representation by we the people have has uh, been drowned out by money long enough. I think the next generation will turn this thing around. I think those who are fighting for $15 an hour, I think those who are, are on board with uh, Occupy Wall Street, I think those who are on board with a more progressive agenda that's going to represent more people and increase uh, 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 income opportunities, yeah. I see all of those things. I get a, fi I I get a final question in, sure. I get one, and, and you, get one, you get a one word answer. Okay. Democrats win the White House, yes or no? Absolutely, yes. In 2018? The White no. House in the White 2020. House in 2020. Oh. No. No. Yes? No. Stay tuned. That's why we have perspectives. So we can hear these various perspectives. And obviously you've heard two very different perspectives. Lee Bynes and also our guest, Lloyd Paul. Gentlemen, you gotta wrap up on that note. You gotta come back. You wanna shoot the fire at the end of the show. Well, come there on, you man. Go. Lee, I mean, Lee you wanna shoot the fire. Move to Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you gotta love these guys. Lloyd <laughs> Paul, Lee Bonds, our guest in studio. Listen, you can check them out here on Perspectives, and uh, you can check out our conversation. We talk the world of politics and that and a whole lot more. For all of us on the set of Perspectives, I'm Darren Hyman. Until next time we meet, stay safe. Share your perspective with somebody else, and next time wear your bulletproof vest. <laughs> here, shots fired in here, baby. What's on your mind? Let them know. What's on your mind? Let them know. Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions Cause in the long run it's your voice, your views, your vision Keeping it real with many messages for you to know This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show Entertainment, he rocks it Politics, he locks it The host with the most would handle anything I guess sometimes things just happen Devastating things Your whole world changes in an instant That's what happened to me The day my mother had a stroke I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. From your first sunrise to the sunset of life, we are with you through life's journey. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Visit socialsecurity.gov. This video produced at U.S. taxpayer expense.